workers heading to Fukushima Daiichi day after day to tackle a long list of problems. Highly trained teams will spend the rest of the year removing fuel rods from the reactor 4 building at the nuclear plant. But operator Tokyo Electric Power Company is still trying to deal with an issue that gets worse with every passing minute. NHK World's Noriko Okada has more on the buildup of contaminated water. Lake Barrett is a former U.S. nuclear regulator. He led the decommissioning of a damaged reactor following the Three Mile Island accident. Barrett is currently working as an advisor to Tokyo Electric Power Company. He says TEPCO's top priority is to lay out a clear plan this year for solving the contaminated water problem at Fukushima Daiichi. A lot of work ahead of them. Uh, water is a continuing challenge. Control of the contaminated water is a very complex matter because it's a very complicated site with groundwater movements. Groundwater becomes tainted hour after hour at the plant. It seeps into the damaged reactor buildings and mixes with melted fuel. Workers pump up about 400 tons of it every day. All they can do is store it in tanks. About 1,000 containers dot the site. And TEPCO officials plan to build more. They are cooperating with the Japanese government to take drastic measures to stop the build-up. They plan to surround reactor buildings and other facilities with pipes and then pumping refrigerants to build a kind of ice wall. They believe this will keep fresh groundwater out. Underground tunnels are another problem. Engineers also plan to stop highly contaminated water from seeping into the sea via those tunnels. In this case, they plan to block the flow of tainted water from reactor buildings by freezing the entrances of the tunnels. Workers will again drive pipes into the ground and pump refrigerants into them. That would freeze the contaminated water within a few weeks. Once the tunnels are blocked, crews will then clear them of tainted water. TEPCO officials also need to figure out how to dispose of the contaminated water that's building up in the storage tanks. Crews had to clean up a number of spills from the tanks last year. They've been trying to decontaminate the water with a system called ALPS. It can remove most radioactive substances. Plant managers want to take all of the substances out of the water by March 2015. But ALPS is unreliable and frequently stops operating. Experts warn that if engineers can't tackle the contaminated water issue, they will further delay the decommissioning process. That job is expected to take 30 to 40 years. Noriko Okada, NHK World. Officials in central Japan are warning of what they suspect is a norovirus outbreak at elementary schools. Around 900 students across the city of Hamamatsu missed classes because of vomiting and diarrhea. This is an abnormal situation. We want to investigate every possible cause. 
Children showed symptoms at 14 schools. 12 of those schools closed for the day. Officials say the norovirus was detected in five students. More than 40 school staff members also complained of symptoms. None of the children or adults was hospitalized. City officials say the schools have their lunches made at separate facilities. They're trying to find out whether those facilities use the same ingredients. Very hard to imagine how there could be a five-fold increase in natural background radiation from the sort of material that's coming from Fukushima. It's just too far away. Well, Alex, I, I'm, I'm pleased to, to be here again. Um, I, I'm a bit confused myself about what's going on, I have to say. Um, the, 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 the point is that the amount of radioactivity, if you, if you, if you do the calculations, the amount of radioactivity that's gone into the sea um, by the time it's diluted and, and, and come, come across to America, would not be able to, on the basis of theory anyway, cause the kinds of increases in radioactivity that are being reported. Um, now, I, I had a look at, uh, I've been following, following measurements made by the, the US RADNET system, which is, which is an excellent system, you know, so long as it works, and it usually does. Um, where you can see levels of radioactivity or radiation of different, different uh, energies um, plotted out uh, from a number of different stations throughout the United States. And of course at the same time since Fukushima we've had a whole, a huge number of people actually buy Geiger counters and put themselves on networks where they report the measurements that they've been, um, been taking. And I followed with great interest this, this extraordinarily useful development. But by and large, what they've been measuring has been radon in rainwater. And so uh, people, you know, over the last year or so have been getting terribly excited because suddenly they get five times background or even sometimes 10, 15, 20 times background by measuring rainwater. Uh, and, I've, and I've then asked them to measure the rate at which this, the, the radioactivity decays in the rainwater samples, and usually it's very rapid, which suggests that it is radon, natural radon. But having said that, the levels of natural radon seem to be increasing, and I'm a bit puzzled about that too. Um, now, as far as the, the Fukushima radiation coming to the United States, th this report from LA and from San Diego uh, talking about a five-fold excess. W w I, I followed this up and had a look at the weather patterns for those areas and looked at the RADNET measurements, um, which, were, which are on the internet, and where you can see these levels of gamma radiation plotted. And in fact, they plot very much on the top of, of fog banks. So if you, look at, if you look at fog banks, which of course fog banks occur a lot in California, uh, and as the fog floats in, so the radiation levels go up. Now, I think that the radiation levels would go up anyway as the fog comes in because there's more material there to cause gamma radiation from quite natural sources. But I'm not saying that's it. So I, I mean, I, having said all this stuff, I, I know it sounds a bit waffly, but I mean, I would like to wait and see somebody actually measure the gamma radiation spectrum of whatever it is that's supposed to be coming in and, and, and causing the irradiation of America. Because it's very hard to imagine how there could be a five-fold increase in natural background radiation from the sort of material that's coming from Fukushima. It's just too far away. Santa Barbara's chef is taking extreme measures to keep his customers safe from what he says is dangerous seafood. Chef Roberto Perez of Seagrass Restaurant in Santa Barbara is no longer serving seafood from the San Diego border all the way to Alaska. That means no local fish will end up on his plate. He says radiation levels from the Fukushima nuclear disaster are what caused him to change the way he cooks.
The way things are heading, we just feel strongly that it is not safe and I won't consume the fish and I'm definitely not going to provide it to my, my, my guests. I just can't, I can't do that with a clear conscience. Scientists think avoiding the seafood is overboard, citing the fact that levels of radiation in the fish are less than what people are exposed to from x-rays. But Perez says what he serves has to be able to stand behind. He has to be able to stand behind it, even if some people think it's extreme. Energy is a major challenge for Vietnam, but the country may delay a plan to build its first nuclear power plant. The Toy Che newspaper reported on Thursday that Prime Minister Nguyen Tan Zong said that work on Vietnam's first nuclear power plant will probably have to be delayed until 2020. Zong reportedly said that the project requires the highest standards of safety. The paper said Zong told state-owned Petro Vietnam to ensure it supplies enough gas to a planned power plant to make up for the energy shortfall caused by the postponement. The government plans to build the plant in the province of Ninh Thuan with the help of state-owned Russian energy firm Rosatom. Vietnam has chosen a Japanese consortium to help build a second nuclear power plant in the same province. It's not clear what effect a possible delay in building the first plant will have on plans for a second facility. Vietnam plans to build a total of seven nuclear plants by 2030, but the Vietnamese government has decided to take more time to train people to operate atomic power plants since the 2011 Fukushima Daiichi plant nuclear disaster in Japan. Renewable energy in Germany last year accounted for a record 23% of total electric power generation. Germany has been moving away from nuclear power since the Fukushima Daiichi plant disaster in March 20. The country's Association of Energy and Water Industries on Tuesday published preliminary figures for domestic power generation for 2013. The report says the use of renewable energy sources increased by six tenths of a percentage point to 23.4%. Among renewable energy sources, wind power accounted for 7.9%, biomass contributed 6.8%, and solar 4.5%. Germany aims to put an end to nuclear power by 2022. The ratio of nuclear power was 15.4% last year, down by four-tenths of a percentage point from 2012. The country plans to increase the use of renewable energy sources to 80% by 2050. It introduced a system in which power utilities purchase electricity from renewable energy sources at higher prices. The increase in costs are added on to household electricity charges. Exposed in the United States Air Force, dozens of officers in charge of nuclear weapons are accused of cheating on tests. ABC's Mary Bruce has the latest on the scandal. They are responsible for the world's most dangerous weapons, the U.S. Air Force Nuclear Command now rocked by a cheating scandal. Nearly three dozen officers at Malmstrom Air Force Base in Montana caught sharing answers for a monthly recertification test, possibly the largest breach of integrity in the nuclear force. Now, this is absolutely unacceptable behavior, and it is completely contrary to our core values in the Air Force. 34 officers have been charged, removed from their posts, their clearances suspended. Military officials say some of them texted answers back and forth. Others knew about the cheating but did nothing to stop it. Regardless of an airman's level of participation, cheating or tolerating others who cheat runs counter to everything we believe in as a service. Now all 600 officers in the nation's missile launch program are being retested. There is no room for mistakes with nuclear weapons. The cheating was uncovered during a separate drug investigation. It's just the latest in a string of embarrassing controversies. A top commander was fired last October after allegedly being drunk at a conference in Moscow. Four officers were also disciplined last year for falling asleep on the job. Despite the troubling pattern, the Air Force maintains confidence in its nuclear force. I want you to know that this was a failure of some of our airmen. It was not a failure of the nuclear mission. All of the nation's missile crew members are expected to retake that proficiency test by the end of today. And some of the nation's top Air Force officials, eager to show they're taking action, will be paying a personal visit to the launch sites next week.